Based in Mogul, Brisbane, Jenny Gerke has been a level two specialist coach, coach educator, judge and trainer for over 25 years. She has been on the Queensland State Squad for the past 20 years with numerous horses, Contessa, APH Magma, Femsatine, Jatan, and currently with Fairbanks Jazz Time. Winner of numerous state and national championships, including the Australian Pre St George Challenge, and as a previous member of the Australian National Dressage Squad, Jenny attends coaching clinics with visiting international coaches and trains at home with Tracy Baldwin. Jenny is sponsored by High Gain Feeds and Horseland Jindalee. Demonstrating for Jenny today is 16-year-old Eloise Devlin and 17-year-old Annie Simmons. Eloise is riding Brimstone Florente, a four-year-old Hanoverian by first time out of an animal mare. This is his second outing and quite a big step for this young man. Annie Simmons is a 17-year-old student from Brisbane and riding Florette, a 16 one-hand 14-year-old small tour schoolmaster. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend, Jenny Gerke. Thank you, Cheryl. Have we got sound? I'm the first one off, so I iron out all the kinks in the system. Can everyone hear me? Yes? Excellent. Welcome to the 2014 Festival of Dressage. It's great to see so many people here so early. Uh, we, um, I'm not sure if you know how the demonstrations are decided upon, but the process briefly is that we go on your feedback from the previous festival. And then the committee is given a whole lot of feedback. They decide on what people want to see next year, and then they put on a little bit of paper and they hand it out to us. So what I was handed this year was getting started in dressage. So I hope that what I have to say today is helpful for you. And I hope that it's not just helpful for those of you that are just getting started in dressage, because what I'm talking about today is the basics. It starts and ends with what I'm talking about today. You start at this point and you're still working on it when you're riding a horse at Grand Prix. So recently I was lucky enough to see what I considered to be the most beautiful, dressage at its most beautiful, which was watching the best riders and the best horses in the world in Caen, in France, doing fancy tricks in a dressage arena with a stadium full of 30,000 people. And uh, certainly it kept, it'll keep me riding dressage for as long as I can and experience like that. But dressage isn't just about fancy tricks in an arena. Dressage is gymnastics for horses. It's physiotherapy for horses. Any horse, whatever its size or breed, as you've seen from the horses that came in in the previous demonstration, can benefit from dressage training. People come into dressage from all directions and for all sorts of reasons, but what they need to do is the same thing. I couldn't possibly hope to have a a demonstration rider that represents everyone that wants to do dressage. For example, I haven't got an eventer that wants to improve their dressage test. I haven't got a polo cross player like my husband who wants to make his horse fit and sound and keep it sounder for longer in the polo cross season. But what I have got here today is two lovely riders that I'm privileged enough to work with outside of the festival on two very different horses. In the front, we have Annie Simmons, who you've heard about. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure that um, Florette's 14, but let's just say that she's a lady that's of an age that doesn't discuss an age. For Florette and myself, 50 is the new 40. And then we've got L on Jackson, and he's just a baby, and this is his first, or well, first real outing. And uh, he's been to a little show before, and he's, um, this is a very big step for him. With Florette, I would really like to show you how dressage, you can see from this beautiful horse, that she's so well muscled, she moves so nicely, and, and she is a bit of a senior citizen, and we can see how her dressage training is keeping her loose, strong, and supple into her more senior years. And I certainly have seen horses 
the same age as Florette that don't look like that and it's because they don't do dressage. And Elle's just starting out with the horse. Um, Ella's ridden at FEI level on her, her horse, Sam, and Jackson is actually trained by her very capable and talented mother, Sally, and Ella's only riding him today because Sally didn't want to be in the demonstration. <laughs> and so Elle hasn't trained a young horse up herself, so hopefully these two riders will give you a bit of, well, you'll be able to identify with, with one of them. Okay, so we want to get started in dressage. Well, this could have been a seminar, but it's a demonstration. So what we're talking about today is the training that you need to do when you start out in dressage. But before we start that, we'll just sort of do a bit of a checklist. So you want to get started in dressage. Well, the first thing you should do is go to the festival of dressage. So tick to everyone that's here today. Then the second thing you should do is find an awesome coach. Everybody, every athlete needs a coach and everybody needs guidance. So tick that box if you've already done it. Then the third thing you need to have obviously is a horse. And you really just, with dressage, you re, you're really looking for a horse with three clear and correct paces. You don't need to spend millions of dollars on, to have a horse to train it in dressage. A good rhythm with the horse is more important than fancy elastic paces. So we'll just briefly talk about the paces. Girls, if you can just take your horses forwards to walk. And we'll just quickly talk about what we're looking for in the paces. In the walk, we're looking for a clear four beat rhythm. If you start with the left hind foot, go left hind, left front, right hind, right front. We'll start with florette. I'll count out the rhythm, starting with the left hind. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you can't see that, keep looking until you can. That is a clear four-beat rhythm. Eloise's horse also, oop, also has a clear four-beat walk. Sometimes horses, if they're restricted with the rider's hands, can develop a pace where their walk becomes lateral, where both legs, hind legs, the right hind and right fore will hit the ground at the same time and the left hind and left fore will hit this ground at the same time and it's no longer a walk. So if it's no longer a walk, it's got nothing to do with dressage. And we're also looking for a good activity in the walk that the horse really wants to go and we're looking for an over track. If you have a look at the hoof print of the horse's front hooves and then watch where the corresponding hind hoof lands in relation to it, you want to see that it lands in front of the hoof print of the forefoot. So Annie, just let Florette's nose a little bit more forward. That's it. Let it out a little bit more, really let her relax. Now the over track is even more clear. So this is a quality walk. And Jackson, he can be a little bit more in front of your leg. Elle, he's a bit, he says I'm being very brave. But even when he's not boldly walking forward as if he was walking home towards the feed bin, you can still see that he has a clear over track. So these two horses, well, so far we're gonna take them to train with dressage. All right, so girls, just go forwards to working trot. You can stay rising. In the trot, we're looking for a clear two beat that's even and regular. We want one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. We don't want one, two, one, two, one, two, which is uneven or lame. And it's the horses move with diagonal pairs of their legs. So the left front and right hind will hit the ground at the same time and the right front and left hind will hit the ground at the same time and there's a clear moment of suspension in between the two bits of the trot. And when you're ready, just go forwards to canter. L, if you don't think he's ready, that's fine. In the canter, we're looking for a three beat. That's fine, I'll just bring him back. A three beat canter. Just do a circle, Annie, and get her to relax. Let her drop down, that's it. Flexion, let her a little bit longer, Annie. Make a bit softer. Good. So we're looking for a clear three beat rhythm that goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, with a clear moment of suspension between each stride and a nice bounding jump. And as the horses warm up and get going, you'll be able to see that. Okay, girls, you can give them a little rest. That's great. And just let them stretch out for a moment. 
Good. Now, all of the topics that I'm talking about today could be individual. The, the, the basics that we're covering could be individual demonstrations. So I'm talking really a lot about what and only touching on how so I don't get bogged down and, and miss out on important um, components of the, of the demonstration. But I will uh, let you ask me some questions if you'd like to at the end, if you want some tips or would like to go into anything that we talk about in a bit more detail. Just um, having said that we want a horse with three clear paces to train dressage, dressage training is very beneficial for horses that don't have clear regular paces. It should develop the quality of their paces, not make them worse. So if you s we all end up training dressage initially on whatever we've got. And all we want to do is make that horse stronger, more flexible, so that we can keep it more sound for longer. So if you've got a horse with a bit of a dodgy cant or a dodgy walk, dressage will improve it. But again, that's a topic for another demonstration. I think you need to, uh, before you start training in dressage, always, or training in any discipline, pay attention to your relationship with the horse. Develop a relationship for, with the horse. We're all doing this because we love horses. Don't lose sight of that. We need to obviously make sure that we're meeting the horse's feeding requirements, shoeing requirements, saddle fit, tack, all its other, you know, chiropractic, dental, all of those things, they really become a massive part of any discipline. And, uh, and it's, I just couldn't do this demonstration without at least mentioning it. And just walk back onto the paces for a moment. When you're picking a dressage horse, I would really advise you to pick your horse on pref and, and really look for a, a quality walk and a quality canter. Dressage will improve the quality of all the paces, but the trot is the easiest pace to improve. Many of us go out to buy a, a dressage horse that when it's free running around the arena with its tail stuck straight up in the air and a stick back, it's got a fancy trot. And we think, awesome dressage horse. And it's not necessarily the case. So long as the trot is, uh, it has a good natural rhythm, you can really develop the trot into something fancy. You can improve the walk in canter, but it's much more difficult. So make your emphasis when choosing your dressage horse on the walk and the canter and their trainability. So we're covering all of this, everything that we're covering in this lesson isn't something that is covered in one demonstration, one lesson. As I said, it's continuous. It goes on through your whole, your whole training, every day, every year, from prelim to Grand Prix you're going to be working and paying attention to the basics. It's like building a house. If you don't have a good foundation, the house will fall down. The same with dressage. Most of your corrections, and when you're training a horse, have to be built on a solid, solid foundation, solid basics. OK. So we want to start thinking about training the horse now. Where do we start? What do we do? Well, to me, it makes sense that before you can train a horse, you need to be able to ride a horse. So what we need to pay the most attention to right at the start is your position on the horse. And it's not just because it's eye candy for whoever is watching. The horses are extremely sensitive animals and you owe it to them to be able to sit in a way that doesn't interfere with their movement, allows them to use their bodies correctly and allows you to give clear and effective aids that work with the biomechanics of the horse. When we're looking at the dressage position, we're looking for a straight line from the rider's ear, shoulder, hip to heel. You can check it out on the girls. Elle's leaning forward a little bit, just on purpose to show you all. And then another straight line through the elbow, from the elbow through the wrist down to the horse's bit. Uh, again, this topic of the seat is massive. Usually at every festival of dressage, there is at least one demonstration on improving the seat because it's the hardest thing, isn't it? Anyone who's got a good position on a horse has got a good position on the horse because they've worked really hard at it for a really long time and it never stops. It's all right. Good boy. It's very exciting. If, you need to, if he needs a little trial, just do whatever you need to do. If you're, um, 
Oh, no, I didn't speak about one of the most important straight lines on the horse, is the line straight down the middle of the rider and through the horse. You need to be absolutely centred on the horse, not collapsing off to one side. Can you girls both show me a bit of a crooked seat? Usually, unless you have some body defect, fantastic, give me a few different variations that you might see. Think of someone that you thought, oh, why are they sitting like that? And show me that. Oh, very good, Elle. Nice and forky. And yes, too far forward, too far back. All of these, and you watch the horses when the girls do this. They sort of, oh, what are you doing? I had one horse when I did a demonstration with the seat that just pinned her ears back every time Jaden sat crookedly on the horse. So they don't like it. You're giving them a message. You're in their way. You need to sit straight on the horse, not collapsing to one side or the other. This is hugely important. So in improving your seat, the best thing that you can do for yourself is have a coach that tells you what to do. You can video yourself. You'll often find you're your own harshest critic. And riding with mirrors is just the most fantastic thing. However, you do get a bit of domestic blindness. You go past the mirror and you go, looking great. And you're only looking at your bottom half or um, you're only looking great when you're going past the mirror. You have to be really onto it all the time. It never stops. Okay, so you're sitting well. I've chosen two riders that can ride on purpose. They're sitting well, they both sit beautifully. And, um, oh, I didn't, I talked about Els. Um, we'll just talk about what I want these girls to do for you. Florette and Annie, Florette is a very seasoned campaigner in dressage. Just let her nose out a little bit, Annie. That's it. Annie started dressage just one year ago. And, oh, I've lost my little fuzzy thing. It's gone, I'll try not to snort into the microphone. She'd started dressage just one year ago, but prior to that, she was extremely seasoned competitor in the hack ring. She's won lots of state and national titles. She's been show jumping. The girl can ride already. So she's got onto a horse that knows how to do dressage, but they had to come together. And Annie had to learn these things that I'm telling you about today. And Florette is quite adjustable, so Annie, can move Florette around and show you the wrong way to do things as well. I don't want Elle to be doing that because this day is about getting this horse's confidence. We don't want to be asking him to do anything strange and weird. We just want to be doing everything as well as we can, although she will do some mistakes on purpose later. But we don't want to blow the horse's confidence. And that's why I've got these two different horses in here. Okay, so. First thing, when you can sit and ride well, or you know, you've know you reached a critical line of capable to start training your horse, is that we want to get the horse to respond to our basic go, stop and turn aids. In dressage, it's very, very important that the horse is in front of the rider's leg. So we hear that, but what does it mean? Well, it really means that the horse just wants to go like he's traveling home towards the feed bin, as I said before, that he goes without constantly be reminded by the rider to keep going. If he's in a canter, you want to get the feeling that you could go over a jump at any time. You don't want to be carrying the horse around. The horse needs to be carrying you around. And this has to start at the walk. And similarly, the horse needs to wait for the rider. We don't want the horse to be getting progressively faster until there's a sonic boom every time it goes past C. We need to be controlling the horse. It needs to be waiting for the rider, yet wanting to go. And this is absolutely ongoing. We constantly need to be checking if the horse responds when we touch it with our legs. And I found in my experience as a rider and a coach is that horses are much better at training us than we are at training them. A horse, a lazy horse, won't get tired of saying, can I stop, can I stop, can I stop? Can I stop? And a goey horse won't get tired until they're extremely old of saying, can I run faster? Can I run faster? Can I run faster? But riders very quickly, particularly teenagers, get, they say, slow down, slow down, slow down. It's not working, I'll just hang on. Or get in front of my leg, get in front of my leg, get in front of my leg, I'll sod it, I'll just carry you around every step with a constant grinding squeeze on your sides and wonder why the horse isn't moving beautifully through its body because it's got spurs rubbing a hole in its side. So 
we have to really be consistent with our training to get our horses to stay in front of our leg. So this is really important. So I did want to spend a little bit of time on showing you how to get your horse to respect your leg aid. We want the horse to move off the smallest aid possible. And we don't want to sweat too much when we're riding around, do we? I don't. It's hard enough in Queensland. So we want the horse to do the work. So girls, and he may be faced the other direction so you're not frightening Jackson. So if you turn and head that way. What you do when you're getting your horse to go in front of your leg is, actually girls, you know what to do so you can just start doing it, all right? Is you bring your horse to halt. And then with the various, very smallest indication, you raise up your body tone and you think, I'm walking off. And with the very smallest touch of your leg, your horse should go, I'd love to do that. And if they don't do that, if they don't spring forward like, how fast did you want, mummy? We're going to give them a little reminder. So Annie, can we see a little, a little reminder? So Annie's going to show us on Florette. Don't run up Jackson's backside, though. Oh, soft hand. Tiny little aid. Go, 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 go. Don't worry about patter, honey. Patter. Don't worry about what pace the horse goes into. They can gallop off and have a bit of a pig root. It's all good. Stand up and pat them on the neck and say, that was awesome. That's the reaction I want. Don't confuse them with, but you can't put your nose in. Can't put your nose out. You can't go too fast. Just let them go and praise them. And then repeat it. Do it again, Anz. We're going to go halt, trot. So halt. Raise your body tone, trot. Go, 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 come on. So that wasn't sharp enough. She's an FEI horse. She should just trot off as soon as Annie says. Go again once you get to see Annie. And you repeat it, Annie, until she says, yep, I'm off. And don't be frightened to go. Good, patter. Good. And even once, if she needs to have a little canter, go into it. And hold. Go, go, canter. Go, quick, keep going, canter. Make her go, Annie. So you're, I think you're not being clear, Annie. Go. That's better. And patter. Good. And give with your hands a little bit more. Now hold. Now only use the tiniest leg aid. Let's see what we get. Yeah, right. Florette says, I want to go. Now stay in trot, Annie. Now, Annie, keep your legs quiet, Nance. Don't touch her with your lower leg. Keep it soft. We'll touch her, but don't squeeze with it. So now Florette is going without Annie having to push. Can you see that? Any nods? She wants to go. Elle, do you want to do a few walk transitions? And you can keep doing that. You can both keep going walk. And make sure he's sharp, Elle. Don't be too careful. You've got to train him. Good, Annie. Good. And then go on. So while we're talking about go and stop, it's extremely important that you keep your horse sensitive to your forward driving aids and your and your restrictive aids, your slow down aids. So you're constantly doing what we call half halts, which is really just a response to stop and then changing your mind and trotting off. So El, maybe we can do that. Can you go forwards to walk? Just turn left and hand him away from the scary stuff. That's it. That's it. And trot on, El. Just go to trot. Good. And Annie, let's do a few halts. Actually, girls, we'll do a few uh, of the halts. So we've talked about go, and you've given you a bit of a tool to use at home. And, and something that I find that helps is if you actually say go out loud when you think it. And if the horse isn't trotting off when you think it, then you need to do something about it. Either a tap with the whip behind your leg, but I prefer to use the spur, bring your spur against the horse's side and give a little tap with the spur without squeezing harder with your legs, so spur without leg, because you don't want to teach the horse that a bigger aid is what they move off. The tiny bit of leg is the aid. The spur is the, that was the aid, let's go. Okay, it's the reminder. So we've talked about go, and now let's talk about halt. When you want to teach your horse to halt, pick a spot on the arena, a letter, so Annie, um, L, turn left, give yourself a bit of space. Pick a letter on the arena and don't let your body go past that letter. And if the horse runs on into your hand and says, I'm, so you think of stopping your body. If the horse keeps going, then you stop your hand next to that letter. So let's see it, Annie. At P, don't let your hands go past the letter P. Ready and stop. Definitely release, patter, 
Good, and trot again. Go, go, trot. Good. And then at our walk. Oh, good. Good, and stay and walk. And just do it at M, do a halt at M. So just stop your hands level with M. Right, good, good. So if the horse walks forward into a non-allowing hand and there's 10 kilos down the reins, that has happened because the horse has gone through your stopped hand. That isn't pulling, that's training. If you are moving forward on the horse and you have 10 kilos in your hands, you are pulling. You, if you have a non-allowing hand, you don't want the horse to move, it has to stop so that you can immediately release. Don't be confused between stopping and pulling backwards. So I'm not going to show you pulling backwards because I don't want to upset these horses, but I think you've all seen it, you've all done it, we all have. So now, if your horse goes and stops, we start to develop a half halt. So we'll start with you, Elle. Just pick up the, go forwards to working trot and go large. Just come in off the track ends. Okay, so L at C, I'd like you to walk. Good, and quietly walk on, lovely. And then at M, go forwards to trot again. Very nice reaction for a baby, isn't he cute? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get L to ask for a walk at, uh, around here at E, L, around the other side. And ask for a walk, and when you feel him go to respond to walk, I want you to change your, change your mind and trot on again. So let's see if we can see it with the horse. Going on, good, and trot on again, go. That is a very basic half halt. That's checking the brakes. Okay, and again, do that at C so everyone can see it. Trotting, 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 oops. <laughs> so he did his own half halt then, we'll ignore that one. That's it, I'll put a little bit of inflection to the right, good. Yes, very good, and go on. And when you bring the horse back, do it again, Elle. When you bring it back, good. Just wait till he relaxes, good, and go on, perfect. So you start, even at this very young age, repeating, thanks, Elle, repeating these transitions, half halts, within the paces, over and over and over again to develop the horse's strength. Every time he goes to stop, he's sitting. Every time he trots off, he's pushing. He's developing his carrying power. It puts the weight more onto the horse's hindquarters because he has to drop his weight back to stop and push off to go. So it brings him more uphill and lighter on the forehand. These transitions, transitions, transitions over and over again. I just want to say, though, that Something that I find as a coach is that when I say half halt, what I want to see is the horse half halt. I'm disinterested in the aid. I want to see a reaction from the horse. If the rider says to me, I am half halting, I say, well, that's well and good, but your horse isn't. So what do we do when we say, hey, horse, wait for me, you're running, and he says whatever and keeps going? answer is we make the downwards transition. We go back to picking a letter and saying, well, which bit of stop didn't you get? And we have to be consistent with that. We have to not give up and say, oh, okay, I'll just hang on and you can run because the horse will become stiff in its back and eventually unsound. So Annie, can you just show us a few half halts now? Actually, let's go to canter, Annie. So Florette gets a bit fresh and excited when she's out. And good, just go large, that's it. Quite, leave it. Leave it down, let it be soft. That's it. Go from trot. Okay, fine. Good, looking up. Okay, so let her just go at the speed that she wants to go at, Annie. Good, so she wants to go quite fast, it's exciting. She wants to flatten out and get a little bit on the forehand. So Annie, let's try some half holds. Good. Take your weight into, yes, push down, good, good, and back again, okay, and yes. And he just showed us exactly what you do. She asked for a half hold on the short side and it came through. If you didn't see it, put your hands up. We can do it again. Then when she came onto the diagonal line, she asked for half halt and Fred stuck a nose in the air and said, no, I can't hear you, la, 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 la. So Annie said, okay, just walk then, sweetheart. 
And now, let's do a half halt. Yeah, and walk again. And wait till she's soft. And canter again. Wait. Good. And now gently half halt, slow down. Slow down. Good, good. And now she's accepting the half halt. Go forwards to walk, Annie. Horses have a brain about the size of a walnut. There's a tiny little walnut of brain cells rattling around inside all that air and bone. And they don't think much, but they're consistent. Floretta's going to say, I'm excited, can I go faster? I'm excited, can I go faster? Over and over and over again. It's taken just a short time to teach Annie that she's got to let her go and then say, hey, sweetie, you need to slow down. And when she doesn't slow down, she asks for a downwards transition, rewards her and repeats it over and over and over again. That's training, okay? All right, so we've got go and stop sorted. We've got some half halts. We've talked about how many you're gonna to have to do. Think millions. If you don't enjoy, uh, don't enjoy doing transitions, dressage isn't for you. Horses are either go eat or they're lazy. Pref personally, I would prefer a horse that's more hot that I have to remind to wait for me, that one that I have to light a fire underneath to get it going. And they only get lazier as they get older, so they might be a teeny bit scary when they're young, but by the time they're Grand Prix, they're really pleasant to ride. So I have a monkey strap for the four-year-olds and tough it out. Okay, the only other thing that I would say uh, when we're getting the horse responsive off the aids is that in order to adjust a horse, we need to make it adjustable. So think of a car, if you, you can't turn it without a steering wheel. So at the walk, when I get on a horse, I will check if it goes and stops, and I'll bump it into trot and canter if I need to until it just walks like Florette's walking there without having to be reminded every stride. Bit more active, Elle. Keep him in, go. Trot off, Elle. Trot, go, surprise him, that's it. Pat him and then walk. Stay on it, Elle. Don't let him dawdle around. He's got to learn that he, yes, that's his businessman walk. Much better, much better. And if he gets lazy again, just trot off again and then pat him and walk again. But don't let him dawdle like he's doing his Sunday garden walk. Okay, so back to getting the horse adjustable. We need to also make sure that the horse responds to our gentle turn left and right aids. So, um, Elle, just come into the centre here. Even with the babies, I make sure that they can move their hindquarters off my leg when I put it slightly back and that they'll move their forehand step over with their forehand when I ask him to. Just bring him into halt, L, And just put your right leg back a little bit and just ask him to step over. Good boy, pat him and walk on. That's fine, that's all you need is the response. And if you put your leg on and squeeze with it, you'll lose that response. You have to keep your legs sensitive. L, just try and flex him a little bit to the outside and move his shoulders towards me. You can open your rein towards me, perfect. Can you see him stepping around with his shoulders? We can move his bottom, we can move his shoulders, then we know that we can adjust him as we need to do, do that. Do you want to do a little bit of that, Annie, too? A bit of moving, turn on the forehand. Stay out, stay in walk, just move her quarters out, move her shoulders around. And if she doesn't respond, it's the same. Yes, that's right, good. Slow down, don't let her run. It's the same as with the go and stop. If you put your leg on very gently and the, ask the horse, move your leg over and say, can you just step over with me? And the horse doesn't. Then you need to come with the spur like a finger and say, you know, that was move over, go over. You don't have to bash them or frighten them. You have to teach them, like if they lean on that pressure, it hurts and if they step off it, it doesn't. And then they learn to recognize that move with the leg or the spur is gonna come and chase it up. Good, that's fine. Okay, so before the next thing, I've put these in order, but it's not really as clearly defined as the order that I've put them in. This is, these basics are what you have to work on in every moment, in every ride, individually. When you want the horse to go forward, you just have to say, go forward and don't be confused. You don't want to be saying, go forward, hold your nose in, lift your back, do all of this. It's one little request at a time, closely, closely put together. Uh, Leonie Bramble said to me once, a good rider does 10 things in one stride and a novice rider does one thing in 10 strides. You're doing lots of little things, but you're not clamping and pressing the horse together and making it stiff and blocked in its movement. So girls, just let the horses out on, the, on a, a long rein. 
It's very important that the horse learns to accept a contact. Again, this is a topic for many, many demonstrations at future and past FODs, but this is something that you can start with. Once the horse is in front of your leg, don't do this before you've walked off because they might end up standing up on you. We need to teach the horse that when we take up the contact, they give to the bit. So girls, just go forwards to halt. There's good, Annie, because you can show the people on the short side. All right, leave your reins long. Now, take up your reins. Take up your reins to a normal working length. That's it. Right, so Elle's horse is young. He doesn't know really anything other than to be submissive, thanks to Sally's awesome riding. And Florette's testing the boundaries, which is very helpful for us. Good. When you take up the reins and the horse wants to stick their nose out, it's, you should just keep your elbows on your side like you've got a zipper from your armpit to your elbow so that you're not pulling back that you hold your hands set out in front of you and you just close your fist until you're bothering the horse they'll open their mouth or do something wait any take your hands a little lower and wider ends out wide good and now give give and patter and walk on this basic exercise teach them that when they let go through the neck it becomes soft if you are pulling the horse has no reward for dropping their neck down and they fight it. What we don't want to see is that hideous, and let me say that a little slower and a little louder, hideous pulling of the nose in with straight rigid arms. Don't do it. It's got nothing to do with training dressage. Setting your hands like a set of side reins when the horse questions the frame, you close your fists, you don't pull back and the horse gives to the contact. All right, so you can ride, you're sitting well, your horse is light and fluffy off your go and stop aid, you can turn it. And this is usually where I step in, someone comes along and they say, oh, we want to train our horse and compete in dressage. And even if you don't want to compete in dressage, the first thing that I address usually is getting riders to ride accurate figures, accurate figures of the arena. Not only is it because if the judge wants to see your horse trot from H to F, that's what they want to see. They don't want to see it trot from H to F via B or from H to P. They want to see HF. But it's not just about judges' marks. When we ride dressage, the horse should travel in a rounded and supple frame over the back, soft in its body. We call this on the bit. It's the hardest thing in dressage, isn't it? Keeping your horse on the bit. The tricks are easy. It's just keeping their nose in that's the problem. But the horse only has four ways of avoiding going on the bit. They can run, they can back off, they can go left, or they can go right. So, if you keep your horse in your rhythm, that's in, it wants to go but it's waiting for you, it's not running or backing off, is it? And incidentally, all of those things, you say, what about bucking and shying and rearing? They're all backing off, part of backing off. If you keep your horse in your rhythm, it's not running or backing off, and if you keep your horse on your line, then it's not going left or right. So when I talk about your line, I mean a straight line, if you're traveling on a straight line, and a really accurate curved line if you're on a circle or in a corner. Now, if I were to take out, say Annie's riding a circle here, if I were to take out a section of the circle and replace that section with Florette's spine, Florette would complete the circle. She should be bent and flexed, so flexion happens at the pole, just where the horse brings its nose a little to the inside, and bend happens through the body, a little slower, Annie. A little slower, that's it, good and bend happens through the body, the horse should be bent and flexed the same as the line the horse is travelling on. Now here's a tip for you at any level. Think of that line not as a line in the sand, but as a narrow hallway that's either curved or straight. You want the horse to travel smoothly, willingly, softly, energetically down that hallway without rubbing any part of its body on the side walls. So we don't want to see its hindquarters pressed out to the outside because then it's escaping coming through its body by swinging its hindquarters out. 
We don't want to see it bend its neck too much, more than the circle. Can you show us that, Annie? Can you bend her neck too much? That's it. Good. And maybe push her quarters out a little bit. There we go. And now you see Florette's become a bit uneven, unhappy in the contact. Give her a pat. Sorry, darling. Unhappy in the contact. Do it again, Annie. Let's see if we can make her do that again. That was excellent. Good. She gets uneven, starts to hop, because Annie's blocking with the inside rein. And she's rubbing her inside nostril on the inside wall and she's pushing against the outside wall with her hindquarters. You need to be able to keep your horse exactly on your line between your leg and hand. And the, here's the thing though folks, the horse has to hold itself there. If it's straight but it's leaning on your leg, it's not actually straight, it's still using all the muscles that it would use to be crooked because it's pushing against you. Instead of traveling this way, it's leaning on you and that will affect its paces. It will affect the way it uses its body. It will affect the beauty of the animal. They're designed to go forward. They're flight animals. Allow them to go forward and straight on your straight or curved lines. So it's essential that when you're riding a dressage horse that the rider always, and I mean always, makes a decision about where they want to go, exactly where they want to go. Because they're testing their horse. You're testing if it's waiting for you or on your line. So I often say to the riders that I'm coaching, so what circle on you're on? And they say, I don't know. And my question to them is, well, if you don't know, how does your horse know? So what, are you training it or are you just following it around? This is gymnastic training. We need to make the decisions and not be lazy and be particular about it. El, can you show me a... Um, a dodgy 20 meter circle as well. Do it at A. Right, so just a note for everyone, there's no corners in a circle. So El's just done an awesome corner and he's a bit up and down with his head, isn't he? That's it, oh, turned a bit hard there. Oh, yep, yeah. okay, so, you know, you'd say the horse looks nice, she looks nice, but let's see, and he's, yeah, a bit unsteady. Okay, El, let's, uh, let's bring him on to a really accurate circle and also pay attention to your rhythm that it doesn't change. The trot is the same. All right. Who could see an improvement in the way he goes straight away? I could. The rhythm became the same. The contact became consistent. The acceptance of the bridle was good. He's a, a snorting, extra points for snorting, that shows he's relaxed. So I hope, you know, as again, I, we didn't want, I don't want to upset this horse, but we're able to show, you know, he neighed, he nodded his head, he ran a bit, just the difference it made, thanks Sel, give him a pat. The difference it made when she paid attention to her line was clear. It improves the horse. It's not just eye candy for judges. So we're going to take that on just a little tiny bit further before we wind up. We're right on time, aren't we awesome? Okay, so I talked briefly at the start about the basics being the foundation for your training. So I'm going to get Annie to show us a diagonal line. Can you just do a, a terrible one in trot first, Annie? A beautiful trot, but a terrible diagonal. Nice and soft. Don't bring it too high. That's it. Good. That's good. Very nice. Actually, Annie, we might skip that. We might go straight to the canter work. So Annie's just going to do a straight line across the diagonal, MXK and then FXH. And she's, first of all, she's just thinking about keeping the horse in her rhythm and on her line. If Florette runs every time she hits a diagonal line, she's thinking, we're in an arena, I must be doing something. See her come up and anticipating. Annie slowly keeps her straight gets her round again, softens her in the flexion and bend. Good, Annie. If she runs, good. And then she's able to do a nice straight change. If she can't ride a straight diagonal that she owns, that the horse is going on its own and staying straight, not running, not going left or right, then she's, walk, Annie, walk now. Walk, 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 walk. Yeah, so when you half halted then, she came up, she didn't listen, go right through to the transition. If she can't ride a straight diagonal just without doing anything in the counter, she's not going to be able to ride straight changes, is she? Okay? And if, she, if the horse runs, she's not going to be able to keep the horse in the rhythm in the flying changes when it comes to do tempi changes. And walk. Walk. Good. So for it's thinking, it must be something. That's it. And just walk. Canter right again. 
Good, good. So again, over and over, she's going to come around that corner and just say to Fred, you know what, don't think, just listen to me, just wait for me, it's all good. That's it, check if you could walk, Annie. Good, very good. Canter on again, stay on the diagonal. So, yep, good. Well done. Good. Yep, perfect. When she feels that she's got the horse with her, then she can make a change. Same on this side, Annie. And if you feel like she can do some changes, do them. But if you feel like she runs, bring her back to walk. Make her wait. Walk, walk, walk. No, she came up. You're not fussy enough. Patter. Doesn't always have to be halt, can just be walk. Good. Good, nice, good, straighten her first. Good, right, that's it. So this is Annie training tempi changes. You don't do the same thing over and over and over again badly. You only train it well, you train the basics. When she's waiting for you and soft and supple and allows Annie to set up for the changes, then she'll do them. Wait, make her come back, soft and round. Walking, good, over and over, well done, okay. Just give her a pat, Anne. That's it. And stay and walk. All right. So when you're able to ride your horse on a line of your choice, energetically forward in, in a supple, balanced way, showing good acceptance of the bridle as demonstrated by smooth and balanced transitions, you have what is referred to as the basics. You have got off to a great start in the wonderful sport of dressage. I'd just like to close, you by, close today by reminding you that training an equestrian athlete is not dissimilar from training a human athlete. If you want to become an Olympic gymnast, you're going to spend hours tumbling into that foam pit for every new manoeuvre that you learn. It takes lots of mistakes, lots of practice. It's the same for the horse. Allow them to make mistakes, keep practising and trying to improve on the mistakes, but accept that lots of tumbles into the foam pit are a part of the training. Even if it's a talented gymnast, it's going to take lots of mistakes and getting, getting it right. I think you just need to be happy if the horse is trying for you. Reward it for trying and move on. Keep your relationship with the horse positive and fun. So we have about a minute. Is there anyone that has any questions? No? I must have been awesome then. Thanks very much for listening and I hope you have a great day. You were awesome, Jenny. Thank you very much and thank you, Annie. And thanks, Eloise.